Hey, how are you doing? This is Pastor Jackie Jackson. So glad to be able to be with you. Excited always to be able to bring you messages that have had an impact on me. And certainly today is no exception. We're going to talk about Joseph. And Joseph is somebody that I really enjoy uh, studying and looking at because, you know, God made Joseph a promise. And, uh, you know, in, 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 in terms of the dream that he saw, but, you know, he didn't see the fulfillment of that promise through many years and there are many things that he went through and that's what we're going to take a look at and I hope that you can relate it to your own life you know everything is an instant there's there are times that God will speak into us ministry and direction and and all of that and sometimes we think God's forgotten about what he said he's going to do simply because it doesn't come to pass quickly so we're continuing in our storyteller series and we're coming from the Bible uh, and we're going to read quite a bit of scripture here so that all of this makes sense in talking about the story of Joseph. The title of this is Crescendo. So we can look at the progress or the process of God, how he took Joseph from one place to another to give him what he had always intended for him to have. All right, Genesis chapter 50, verses 19 to 21 says this, But Joseph told them, don't be afraid of me. I Am I God to judge and punish you? As far as I'm concerned, God turned into good what you meant for evil. He brought me to this high position I have today so that I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid indeed. I myself will take care of you and your families. And he spoke very kindly to them, reassuring them. Now, this is the end of the story, right? So you see the glory. You see that Joseph becomes the prince of Egypt. I wanted to, to, to make that clear to you that there is victory there. But, but Joseph went through so much and so many times just before the blessing comes or somewhere within the process, we give up because we feel like it's just not going to happen. It's been a long time. Things aren't going right. So I wanted to read the victory first. I know that's first, I know that's out of sequence, but I wanted you to see that. The word crescendo means any gradual increase in force or intensity, etc. And so you'll see that now. Joseph will start with his dream. In Genesis chapter 37, verses 5 through 8, we find these words. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field when suddenly a sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered round mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he said. Now Joseph was being very innocent. He didn't mean it in an arrogant way, but they already, his brothers already had problems with, with him simply because Joseph was his father, Jacob's favorite. And based on that favoritism that Jacob was showing to Joseph, it created hatred in their heart instead of a true love for their brother. And so now what's going on? He's having a dream that looks like, you know, in the dream he's seeing himself as a favored person, and they have an even, even greater problem with that. Genesis chapter 37, verses 18 to 21, we find these words. It says, Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother. Our own flesh and blood, his brothers agreed. What had happened is Joseph was sent out by Judah uh, to, I mean, by, uh, I'm sorry, Jacob, to go and check on w what was going on with his brothers, how they were faring in the, in the, you know, with the herds and all of that. And when they saw him coming with the coat of many colors that his father had given him, they said, here is our opportunity. He's alone. Our father isn't watching. We can capture him. And what they did is they took him and they threw him into a well and they thought about killing him. But what they decided to do is that they were going to sell him into slavery, to sell him into the Ish, to the Ishmaelites, which is the verse that I just read, the descendants of his grandfather Isaac. 
So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern or well and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. So here, listen, he's, he's had this promise that's been made to him by God that he is expecting that in some way or another is going to come to pass, but he's not expecting the negative. You have to imagine that somewhere along the way there had to be discouragement that Joseph had to fight through and all that because God has made him this great promise and now here is this great challenge that looks like he's going in the absolute opposite direction that he's supposed to be going in. He's actually been sold into slavery. And so he ends up in Potiphar's house. And in Potiphar's house we find in Genesis chapter 39 verses 5 and 6 these words, he's, 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 you, we're going to see the hand of God on Joseph's life. It says, from the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessings of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So he left in Joseph's care everything he had. With Joseph in charge, he did not, he did not concern, concern himself with anything except for the food that he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, and I, and, I, and I stopped right there instead of going to verse 7. I'm not even going to read verse 7 to say this, because I'm paraphrasing portions of this. All right, so clearly, even though Joseph finds himself in situations that he wouldn't want to be in, God's hand is still on his life. And I submit to you that in your life, if, if God has spoken something to you and you're being challenged right now, God's preparing you. He is preparing you. But it, it, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like things are going to turn out right. It doesn't look like it's going to end up being what God said it would be. But if you'll stop and just look at what you're doing right now, you'll see that the hand of God is on your life. That you may not be speaking to thousands of people, or the ministry may not be large, or, or whatever it is that you're trying to do. But where you are, you are successful, as long as you're not complaining. You know, you are successful because the hand of God is on you. Now, God doesn't mind the questions. Don't misunderstand that. We, he knows we're not going to be perfect in this process. We're going to have questions or things that we don't understand. And the scriptures don't give us that in the story of Joseph. But Joseph is a human being. Somewhere along the way, he had to say, well, God, what's up? What's going on? I don't understand. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. But I don't see you at work in my life. And that happens to us as well. And we just have to trust it when we can't see God's hand. We've got to trust his heart. We've got to remember that's one of the reasons why God will give us a word on something. And it hasn't manifested itself yet because he wants us to remember, I made you a promise and I intend to bring that promise to pass. All right? Now, Joseph gets in trouble because Potiphar's wife, she's, she's got the hots for him. He's handsome, he's good looking, he's well built and all of that. And so when Joseph won't submit to that, she lies on him and says that he did something that he didn't, that he tried to take advantage of her. And many of us, if, if you're in ministry, you know, you're going along, you're trying to do what's right, you've not done anything wrong at all, and somebody will tell a lie on you. Someone will misunderstand or misinterpret what your motives are. Maybe it's because of their own. I don't know what the reasons may be, but things will happen. I was in a situation once where a young man who now I've ended up mentoring him and being a blessing in his life, but he thought that I was arrogant. Confidence is not arrogance. However, because of that, those kinds of things can stir up trouble and stir up wrong thinking in the minds of people. Because you're in a process trying to get to where you're going and you need to be able to deal with things like that, handle them, so that at some point it becomes like, you know, water going off of a duck's back. That it doesn't affect you to the point that you stop doing what God has told you to do. See, God doesn't want you to be successful and get where he's trying to get you to go and then you fall apart. That something that is minor throws off the whole ministry. Or, I don't know, a major. It doesn't matter. He wants you to be able to handle the blessings 
that he's going to put on your life. So he's going to take you through a, pro a process. It's gonna, it's, he's going to crescendo your life, your situation, so that you can successfully be used by him. So Joseph, we see the same thing happens to him when he gets in prison. Joseph goes to prison, Genesis chapter 39, verses 19 to 23. It says, when his master heard the story of his, of, uh, uh, of his wife, his wife told, saying, this is how your slave treated me. He was burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in prison, listen, here it comes again. The Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those that he held in prison. And he was made responsible for all that was done there. Here he is again. He's in a situation. He's locked up in prison. He's gone from slavery to being a prisoner. But everywhere he goes, Joseph is successful. Everywhere he goes, it's very clear to everybody that the presence of God is on his life. And let me tell you something. In addition to God training you and showing you what's going on, as he's taking you through these various stations, he's using that as an opportunity to show people that he's real. He's letting people know, I'm God, as he's, as he's continuing you on towards your eventual destiny. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. It's the hand of God that's on Joseph's life. So here, Joseph ends up in the palace. Let's finish this up. Joseph is in the palace, right? Salvation for everybody because Joseph allowed himself to go through this process. You probably already know what I'm going to say in the conclusion, don't you? Genesis chapter 50, verses 19 to 21 says, And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. I am where God wants me to be. Everything that's happened is because God wanted it to happen so that he could get me to where I needed to be. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass all it is this day to save much people alive. You see, there is this great famine. For seven years, it's going to go across the land. And lives of many people, including Joseph's own family, would be destroyed if Joseph didn't go through this process. If he didn't allow God to make him into what he's supposed to be. But because he did, Joseph is looking back now. And sometimes that's the only time that you're going to really be able to, to, to see that the hand of God was always with you. When you look back and you say, you know what? God was all up in this. I didn't see it. I didn't, I didn't recognize it. But God was with me the whole time. He was working out his plan every step of the way. There are many trials that I went through prior to being a pastor that once I became a pastor, I was able to relate to people so much better and understand what it was they were facing because I faced trials not because there was seed that I sowed other than sowing myself into the ministry and allowing God to make me into the person that he wanted me to be. And that's the same for each and every one of us. That doesn't make the road any easier. That doesn't make the next trial any easier. It wouldn't be a trial if it was, you know, something that didn't challenge us. But God will create a track record of getting us where we need to be, giving us success. Verse 21 says, Now therefore fear not, I will nourish you, and your, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly to them as we read in the beginning. God is a great God. He does many great miracles. There's, there's, there, there, there persecution may arise in your life for the word's sake. And it is a tough thing to deal with. I'm trying to make sure that that's abundantly clear. But in the end, if you are walking with God, this isn't trouble you're causing yourself. You're walking with God. God is going to make sure that you become what he has destined you to become. That is crescendo. 
Praise God. I'm Pastor Jackie Jackson. I hope that you've enjoyed this message and gotten much from it, and I hope that it helps with your walk. You can learn more about the ministry by logging on to www.jackiejacksonministries.com, and it will also lead you in our contact section to other places where you can connect with our ministry. I love you. God loves you. And remember, the Bible says in Luke 12, 32b, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God bless you. We'll see you soon.